In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the interface and how to work with Fusion 360. Thanks for tuning in guys and hopefully everybody got Fusion 360 installed and up and running without any problems. So depending on what you have access to, meaning if you're an education user or if you're a commercial user, you might see things slightly different. And I want to point out a few things depending on which license you have. If you are just getting into Fusion 360 and you're taking advantage of the free license of the commercial version until May 31st, 2020, you will see a similar drop down here, which is a workspace that includes generative design. If you're on an education license and you're not on one of the uh, specific accounts that has access to generative design, you will not see that. Other than that, all the other tools that we see here should be identical with the exception of generative design, at least for right now. One thing that's great about Fusion 360 is that there's no specific year or version, which means that you're never out of date. You always have the most current version. You can go offline and you can choose not to upgrade those versions, but at some point in time when you reconnect, it will make sure that you have the most current version. So while that is great that nobody's ever working with a legacy version and have problems with opening files, what does happen is every time there's an update, some of the older video content or lesson content might seem to be out of date because things like icon colors change, new functionalities added. So it's important to note that at this time, we're at the end of March 2020, and this is the version that we're looking at. So once we have Fusion 360 open, the interface is going to look very similar to loads of other programs that you use, whether it's an Office application like Microsoft Office, another CAD program like Inventor or SolidWorks or Katia or anything else has pretty much adopted this ribbon interface. And with a ribbon interface, we have tools across the top. And in this case, we have tabs, which we can navigate to different tools. So sheet metal, surfacing, and solids. These are all things that are directly inside of here. Now, the trick with Fusion 360 is that the interface has a few extra elements that are different than most other programs. On this left-hand side, we have what's called the browser. Now the browser and other programs like Inventor and SolidWorks contain all of the history of the things that you're doing, whether you're making a sketch or a feature or whatever. All that's contained here, but in Fusion 360 it's a bit different. The browser contains information about bodies and components, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Don't worry too much about those names just yet. It has our document settings, things like what units we're working in. It has information about named views, which are the top front right. And we can also create custom named views, which again, we'll do at a later time, and our coordinate system. As we begin to create new components to make assemblies or create new bodies or sketches, we'll get more things here, we'll get folders. So if I select a sketch, which again, don't follow along just yet, we'll, we'll worry about creating these elements later. If I create a sketch, now I have a sketches folder that contains that sketch. What you will notice is at the bottom of the screen, we now have a sketch here. Now, what we see at the bottom is called the timeline. And the timeline is going to contain all of that history-based information. Before we go too far into this and you try to follow along, it's important to note that Fusion has a lot of different variations in the ways that you can model. Right now, we are capturing history, and later on as we begin to design, I'll talk about how we can turn that off, and then the timeline will disappear. We can basically have a free-for-all, begin modeling, creating features and sketches, and not record what's happening. We can turn that on and off at any time, but anytime you turn it off, you're gonna lose that history. So our browser's on the left-hand side, we have comments at the bottom, again, something that we will talk about later, and then we have our features listed across the bottom in the timeline. We have some view options, things like rotate, fit to screen. Uh, we can change our display settings if we wanna make the visual style shaded or wireframe, so on. As we begin to model, we'll start talking about all these elements as they make sense. Right now we have a blank screen or a canvas, which is called Infusion 360, so it doesn't make much sense. 
the top right hand side we have what's called a view cube now if you've been using any other autodesk program such as autocad or inventor that's an element that's going to look familiar to you for about the last nine years they started putting it in the software about 2010 2011 so it's a common element across several of their mechanical design type CAD packages. At the top, we have a tabbed interface for documents. As we begin to create new documents, they're going to be populating across the top. And then we have information at the top right for things like help. If you go into the help menu and you want to find you know, videos or self-paced learning, this is going to take you to the design academy or the help menu. If you select your name, you can go to your Autodesk account, check out your profile, or you can go into Preferences. Preferences is going to be important, especially as you begin to learn Fusion 360. Now, the reason it's important is because we have some general settings in here about how we interact with Fusion. Things like how we pan, zoom, or orbit. The way that Fusion does things might be different than another program. So, I strongly recommend sticking with Fusion, that's what I do, and I simply just learn the ways in which each of the softwares that I work with operate. But if you're used to doing surfacing work in Alias, or you're working in Inventor, or SolidWorks, or Tinkercad, you can change the option to work in how that program specifically works. You can reverse the zoom direction, enable camera pivots, use gesture-based view navigation, so these are all things that you can turn on and off. And again, I recommend leaving all these as the default and sort of learn to work with the software. But I understand that's difficult, especially if you go back and forth between multiple programs. On the left hand side, there are going to be options for pretty much everything. Things like uh, whether or not you want to allow 3D sketching of lines and splines in the design workspace. You can turn these options on and off. We're not going to be going through all of these. It's important that you explore them on your own and understand that there are lots of different options and these do change over time. The main thing that I am going to point out is something called preview features. This is something that you don't really see in any other software. The reason it's great in Fusion 360 is again because everybody's working on the same version. Fusion gets updated every time you log on and every time there's a change, you'll get a notification in this little time piece or this little clock icon. It'll tell you there's a new version. If you want to use it, restart Fusion. But inside of here, we have different options. We have edit in place. We have the mesh workspace for generative design. You have advanced physics and die casting. Now, it's important to note that even if you're using an education license and you don't have access to generative design, you will still see these options. We have manufacturer workspace options, which we'll talk about later. These ones with lock icons, they're specific to Lighthouse accounts. And if you go back up to the top and you take a look at this icon here, uh, it'll tell you that it's uh, very specific to insider programs. So insider programs are going to be uh, specific accounts that have access to these early features for testing and validation. Most software manufacturer companies have that. They'll have a group of beta users that you can sign up for and you can get early access to the release. Uh, and again, that's part of a program that you can be a part of, but it's not available for everybody. So even if you turn these on with the lock icon, if you don't have access to that, then you're not going to see it. And as we go down, there's a simulation, event simulation option. But again, these are important that you check on these functionalities from time to time. You can turn off the lock icon ones and not see them. You can turn off manufacturing extensions, which we'll get to later and only take a look at the preview functionality. These are things that are close to release. So I'm going to say OK. I'm not going to say apply, but I'm going to say OK to those and get back into the user interface in general. The last thing that we really need to understand about the user interface is going to be these last couple options up here. We're not going to be talking about workspaces just yet until we get into the design aspect but those are going to allow us to navigate to different areas and access different tools for things like simulation, cam tool paths, or rendering. And again, as they become applicable, we'll jump into those. But at the top, we have our save, which is pretty normal. We have undo, redo, again, pretty normal. We have basically an infinite undo. Until you close the file, you can undo 
pretty much endlessly. So you can go through a complete design and decide you want to go back 100 steps and you can do that. And then we have this file dropdown. Now the file dropdown has a lot of different options in it. We can make a new design, which we can also do by hitting this plus icon. We can make a new electronics design, which is a PCB design information that's ported over from Eagle that you can now design PCBs directly in Fusion. We can make a new drawing from a design or an assembly. We can open, and when you select open, it'll open up a CAD file that's local to your machine, and you'll have to save it. You, you have to save it to somewhere in Fusion, but you can simply just open that up. Next, we have recover documents. If there was an unexpected close, uh, something happened, it'll have a list of those recovered documents for you. You can see there's one in here. Uh, you can also upload. Now, upload will allow you to upload directly to what's called the data panel without opening the design. Very similar functionality, but uh, this will allow you to put something into the cloud storage without actually opening it. Save, save as, export. Again, these are all things that we're going to talk about as they become applicable. And we have some share options. Again, we'll talk about those as they become applicable. And lastly, there's a view option here. The view option allows us to do things like show text commands. So if you have text commands for um, either uh, JavaScript or Python or simply just text, you can run them down here. Now, if you're used to working in AutoCAD, you're used to the command line, this is slightly different. When we're talking about text commands in Fusion, these are going to give us access to um, certain functionality in here. A Fusion 360 does allow the use of uh, C as well as Python for making what they call scripts, so macros or APIs that you can run different functionality in here. At some point in time, I hope to get into that in this channel, but for right now, um, again, we're just sort of getting into Fusion. We want to make sure that everybody understands what it has to offer. And lastly, we have this button over here that's Show Data Panel, which was also an option in View, Show Data Panel, and you can see the shortcut, Control, Alt, and P. The data panel is going to contain projects. Now, projects are going to be where you store your data. Later on, we're going to talk about uh, in managing users, inviting people to projects, and how that's going to affect your data. But for right now, we want to make sure that we understand the data panel is going to be where we're storing our projects. We also have team hubs and personal hubs. Now, the personal hubs are getting phased out and team hubs at some level are available to everybody. When you create your Autodesk account, it'll ask you to create a hub name and you'll be working directly inside of that team hub. If you're in a personal hub, it'll be based on your username. So if you're using your uh, personal name for the account, it'll say something like Matt's first project. Uh, if you're using a team account, if you've set up a team hub, then whatever name you decided on will be populated up top here. Now you'll see if I hit this drop down, I have access to a lot of different hubs, but uh, right now we're just going to work in whatever hub you're working in. It won't matter if it's personal or team because we're not talking about admin type settings. But what I want you to do at this point is create a new project. So we're going to create a new project called Learn Everything. Now, when we have this new project, you can change its settings, you can put an icon here, but what I want you to do is click on this pin, and I want you to stick that project at the top of your data panel. So this way, if you make a ton of projects or you get invited to projects, you'll know that the one that we're working in is always pinned to the top. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can unpin it. It'll put it back in alphabetical order. But if I'm actively working on a project, I like to keep it up near the top. If we double click on this, now we're working inside of that project and we can do things like create a new folder. And when we're going to create a folder inside of here, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it design series one because we're going to be creating our own files. We're going to create a basic design. We're going to do simulation on it. We're going to do basic toolpath creation on it. And we're going to just talk about the process of using Fusion and, and navigating through those workspaces. So it's going to be our first design series, a very simple introduction to working in Fusion 360. But now we have a project and we have a subfolder where we want to save our first design. We're not ready to create our design yet. We're going to do that in the next lesson. 
So at this point, I know we've covered a lot in this 15 minute plus video, but I wanted to make sure that everything was in one place so that we know all about uh, the user interface, we know about accessing the browser and the timeline where things are saved and those user preferences. So from here you don't have to save anything, you don't have to do anything with any of these designs. Just make sure that you have Fusion installed, that you've created that new project, and that you've added that first folder because that's where we're going to be working in for the rest of these videos.